Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to discuss the various aspects of TCS NQT 2023. So let us have a look what we are going to cover in this video. We are going to start with the flow of TCS NQT, important dates, exam mode, opportunities, additional info, etc. And we are going to discuss all of them in detail one by one. So ensure that you watch the entire video to have the complete understanding of the test. So let's start with the TCS NQT flow itself. This process starts with the registration and the last date of registration is 22nd of July as of now. This might get extended also in coming days. After the registration, you will be asked to appear for the test. After the test, the applicant will be divided into three categories, top performers, good performers and others. Others will be straight away rejected. They will not get any offer letter. The top performers will get a call for TCS digital interview. And after the interview, there will be three possibility. The very first one is that you come out as a top performer after the interview itself. And in that case, you'll receive a TCS digital offer which will be around of 7 lakh per annum. If you perform good as compared to the other candidates, then you might get a TCS Ninja offer, which will be somewhere around 3.6 lakh per annum. And if you do not do well in the interview, then you might get rejected even if you pass the test itself. If you have been good performer of the TCS NQT 2023 test, then you will straight away receive a TCS Ninja interview invitation. And after that interview, there are two possibilities. You cannot get TCS digital offer, doesn't matter how well you perform in TCS Ninja interview. So in the, after TCS Ninja interview, there are only two possibilities. One is that if you perform well and if you are among top performers, then you will simply get TCS Ninja offers. And if you do not do well, of course, you will be rejected in that case. So now that we know the process, let's start with the dates now. So the registration has already started and it will keep on going till 22nd of July 2022. And this might get extended in coming days. As of now, we do not have any information related to the extension. But for now, the last day is 22nd of July. The exam is supposed to start from 15th August. So as of now, there is no date announced for the interview that will be announced once the result for the test is announced. Now this test will be conducted in two modes. One is the remote mode where you can write the test from your home itself. You can use your own machine, internet connection, microphone, web camera. And the second option is in center. So you will have an option to pick where you want to appear for in center exam. If you do not have good infrastructure to appear for the test, our recommendation is to opt for in center exam because in that case, TCS will provide you the facility to write the test at their test center. The next question is why you should do that. So it's going to be a very big opportunity for a lot of applicants. And this year we are expecting around 3.4 lakh applicants in this particular test. And the number of jobs which are open after this test are more than 40,000. Now let's look at the other aspect of the test. In the test, there will be no negative marking. Question switching is allowed. That simply means that you can go from question one to question 10. There is no restriction, but you can't revisit already visited question. What does it mean is let us say you move from question one to question five, then from question five, you can come to two, three and four, but you cannot come to question number one because you have already visited. So make sure if you see a question, you answer that because if you will not answer, you will not be able to come back again to answer that particular question. Section switching is not allowed. That simply means you have to attempt the test in the same order it has been designed and you do not have facility to choose which section you want to attempt first and which one you want to attempt later. It has to be attempted in an order given by the TCS itself. Similarly, subsection switching is not allowed. There are some sections of the paper where we have subsections also. Even in that case, the subsection switching is not allowed. And this year, the test is going to be non-adaptive test. Non-adaptive test means the quality of questions, the difficulty level are not going to vary based on your answer. So this test will have a set number of questions with the set number of difficulty level. It will not change based on your answer of any particular questions. If you are appearing for the online test, it will be AI monitored also. And if you are appearing for offline test, there will be certainly human 
proctor in the center to monitor your activity. With this information, let's move to the test test structure. So this particular test is going to have 88 questions and that has to be solved within 165 minutes only. This test is divided into two parts. The first one is foundation round. The second one is advanced round. In foundation round, we have 66 questions that has to be answered in 75 minutes. In foundation round, we have something called trades or you also know this something as psychometry test. We'll have one question from this. Then we'll have question from numerical ability you also know this as quant and we can have 20 questions for from this particular subject then we'll have 20 questions from reasoning ability also and then we'll have 25 questions from verbal ability now what are the syllabus of these topics we'll discuss that in upcoming slides but for now these are the information and for all these four topics we need to solve this in shared 75 minutes so there is no restriction which section or which topic has to be solved in which uh, how much minute there is no restrictions there are combined 75 minutes given to solve all questions in foundation round this changes a little bit in advanced round in advanced round we have further two sections so section one is going to be uh, given for 35 minutes to be solved and section two you'll get 55 minutes in section one you will have one topic called advanced quantitative ability and from this topic you'll have 10 questions and the second one is advanced reasoning ability again you'll have 10 questions from this so combine these 20 questions has to be answered within 35 minutes itself the last section where we need to have advanced coding questions these are two in numbers one question will be of medium difficulty level and the second question will be high difficulty level so this is how the test has been structured now let's move to the syllabus part as we mentioned that in in this combined round one and round two we have multiple topics one thing that we can note here is that numerical ability is given in round one or in foundation round. In advanced round, it is given an advanced quantitative aptitude. The syllabus is going to be same, only the difficulty level will vary. And the same is the case with the reasoning ability also. So we are going to discuss the syllabus for only one of them. And you can assume or presume that the difficulty level will vary in different rounds. So let's start with the psychometry test or traits you call it. So traits is basically an assessment which is used to measure the cognitive ability or personality or behavior of a candidate. One thing that you need to know is there is no correct answer for any individual question. However, passing this particular section is very important to get the offer letter. So if you do not perform well in traits or psychometry test, then you might get rejected then and there itself. When it comes to numerical ability or advanced quantitative aptitude, as I mentioned earlier, the difficulty level will vary across the round, but, but the syllabus will remain same. In numerical ability, you can expect question from number system, arithmetic ability, elementary statistics, data interpretation, simplification and approximations and mensurations. And further subtopics are given. You can have a note of it by pausing this video. This, this syllabus is given based on the TCS and QT question papers from the previous years. In reasoning ability or advanced reasoning ability, the questions can come from identifying words, numeric patterns, problem solving, etc. So you can see the entire list and then the subtopics under those lists also. Then we have something called verbal ability where the questions primarily come from English grammar and reading comprehension. When it comes to basic coding questions, if you remember in, in our round two, we have two questions from coding which is supposed to come. So the very first question, as I mentioned, it is of medium level. And the topic which you should prepare to, to pass this round is as given on our screen, like working with numbers, looping, functions, recursion, arrays. These are very basic of programming, any programming language. So these, these are the subtopics under basic coding questions, which is going to be the first question. The second question, however, is little tricky. So you can divide this syllabus into two parts, DSA and competitive coding. And if you prepare the topics given on the screen, you are pretty much good to go for this particular round also. Now let's discuss about the eligibility. So in eligibility, we have multiple factors like percentage, highest qualification, age, course type, etc. So let's start with the percentage first. So you should have minimum 60% or 6 CGPA across all the subjects in all the semester of each class. For example, class 10, class 12, diploma, graduation, post-graduation. In all those courses, in all those semester, all the subjects, you should have 60% throughout. 
so that is the minimum requirement in terms of percentage who can participate so anyone who is graduating in 2023 and pursuing any of the degree listed on your screen like btech be mtech me mca msc ms any of these degree is fine in any specialization now are those students allowed who are having backlog so if you have only one pending backlog or active backlog at the time of tcs selection process you will be allowed but if you have more than one you will not be allowed to proceed further however if you get selected by the tcs selection team then at the time of joining tcs that backlog or area or atkt whatever you call it that should not be there at all at the time of joining and all pending backlogs areas etiquette should be cleared within the course duration stipulated by the university itself it should not go beyond that so that is one thing that you need to also keep in mind if you have any gap or break in education you need to specify also while filling up the form and it is important to specify the maximum overall academic gap should not exceed 24 months until highest qualification that is a very important point that you should note and if you have any gap relevant document as applicable will be checked for gaps in education by the at the joining time in terms of age any applicant who is between 18 years to 28 years can participate in this hiring event if you have some working experience up to 2 years you are also eligible to apply this working experience does not include your internship when it comes to course type only full time courses will be considered however those student who have done their secondary or senior secondary from nius they are also eligible to apply provided they have completed their graduation and post graduation courses as full time course i mentioned about mock tests earlier also now we are going to offer mock tests which you can access by visiting tcsnqt2023.kordantra.com and just by filling up the form you can participate in the test and if you are wondering why you should do that then it is a free test you can attempt this test from anywhere it's a browser based test nothing needs to be installed in your machine by attempting this test you will be able to identify where do you stand among 3.4 lakh applicants which are supposed to be there and after the test you will be able to see detailed result analysis which will help you improve further in different areas as suggested by the system so i hope you find this video informative all the best for your tcs and qt 2023 test thank you